Hi, I'm Francois Gautreaux from Bartlett Mitchell, Managing Director for the UK. I'm here with Pete Redman, our Chef Director, and we're just here to do a short, quick video. Apologies that it's on a phone. Uh, we're just trying to get this out as quickly as possible for you guys. Uh, but Pete's going to be talking a bit about working in our industry post-COVID. Uh, so Pete, over to you. How has uh, COVID changed the way you've had to work since we've uh, come out of lockdown? Uh, it's it's changed everything. I think I, I've been working uh, solidly in the kitchen for the last probably seven to eight weeks now. Uh, and it's you have to adapt. You have to adapt to the new way of, of just being a chef, um, which initially I was a bit concerned about. I was a bit worried, if I'm honest. I think about coming back into the kitchen and what that's going to look like. And you kind of have these thoughts of when you get back into it, you realize it's just it's another system. There's more systems. There's more processes. There's more rules. It does take some getting used to, but that doesn't take very long. And then before you know it, you're used to it and you're back in the kitchen and you're cooking with the guys again and you're doing what you really enjoy doing. So how, how have you been able to train people during lockdown? Oh, well, I think initially it started out being more of a, how can I keep you engaged and almost train subliminally, you know? What can we do? So we made sure all of our, like, our online training and self-development was done. Then we started looking at other projects for ourselves, just like researching dishes and researching different restaurants and the best chefs ever. And, you know, what this guy did or what that guy did and, and just looking into it. And how are you having these conversations with people? How are you engaging? Over them? Zoom. We did it over Zoom. You know, we, we, okay. we caught up at least through the whole, through this whole whatever, five month period, at least you know, once or twice a week, um, just to make sure that everyone's OK. And there was that culture of just supporting each other. And, you know, I think self-development during those times it's, yeah. been, it's been a real big thing i think i think it's a great it's, a, it's the, one of the positives we can take out of this rubbish situation i know you've uh, invested a lot of time into online training as well digital training and things like that for things that don't require that face-to-face -face interaction necessarily yeah, yeah. and how's that been going yeah 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 really good i think it's um i think again it's opened that door to as much as we kind of thought about it before, we kind of, oh, we could do this on this platform because the share between how do you train somebody in Manchester and somebody in Glasgow and Portsmouth at the same time? Um, so it's always been that kind of question. This has just pushed us into finding that answer yeah. faster. How do we train people all over the country you know, to, to this level? But just to pre, pre film something, and it could be you know, Daryl shaping some sourdough bread, or, and it's there and it's a reference point. And it's, I think it's. I think it's a great way forward and it's something we'll, we'll definitely continue. Again, it's one of the things we've learned during this time that we'll just we'll roll out even more. So with the things that will continue, I know. So do, do you see most of these things being kind of permanent adaptations to the way we work? Or do you think some are more temporary in nature? I think, I think, so, I think a lot of stuff is going to be temporary. I think there has been a, a thing of some elements of we'll just we'll find a way to make it happen. But in that, there's been some great things to come out of it. Is working super, super, super clean. We are, we are really clean. Is working super, super clean to this level a bad thing? No. If we can do it, well, let's just carry it on. If that gives the, the customer and the clients a bit more faith in, in what we're doing, well, we'll just carry it on. Maybe the style of service can be adapted to that. We don't have to have all these counters just racked up with all this food anymore. Maybe we can have some of it, and maybe half the menu is cold order. So we're watching our wastage, we're cooking live, we're cooking fresh. Right. Our technology advancement in terms of the app and prepay and pre-order and all this. Well, that's great. You know, we, we I guess it has a positive impact on wastage and menu planning as well. On, on everything. On absolutely everything. It's all, not just for our side of it, for the customer experience side of it. You can order. Come down at you know, half past 12 and the guys here will have your, your lunch ready to go. You paid for it. You know exactly what it is. You know what the allergens are. Before, we kind of thought about it and we, we thought that's a good idea. Yeah. But now... Now it's a great idea. So things like that, as much as it will, it will play a part and not the main life, I think I don't think it's going to go away. I think there's going to be stuff that, like that that's going to be here forever. For any chefs out there looking to uh, find work in our industry today, yeah. what advice would you look to give them? The main thing for me, and I've interviewed a lot of chefs, I've met a lot of chefs in my time, uh, the first stage is your CV, get that, get that right. That's your first introduction, uh, now more than ever. Making sure it's clear, it's concise, there's no waffle, you know, make sure, I always say with any CV, have it in the order that you want me to read it. This is who you are, this is what you're about, and this is what you've done. 
I shouldn't have to ever dig through a CV to find the information that I need for that role. It should be right there, clear and prominent. And as soon as I see it, boom, that's the relevant stuff. That's what I need. That's the next stage. And then from that, it's, it's how, how you get that across in that interview. Be this Zoom calls or conference calls, whatever it's going to be nowadays. How do you convey your passion and your drive and, and everything else about you that you need to get through? When it comes to interviews and other environments, you just have to take that same approach to it. Mental preparation. Exactly. And it's silly things like filming yourself on your phone or my phone, you know, all these and just seeing it back. And what can you learn from that? What, you know, what do you do that doesn't, how, have you conveyed yourself? How, has your passion come across? Have you answered that question properly? And it's just practice, 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 practice. And I guess it's a lot easier now because you could film yourself. You could have friends uh, doing it with you exactly. on a Zoom call so you can get a bit ready yeah. for that format. Exactly. I said, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there as well. TED Talks and YouTubes and mad symposiums and all these great platforms where you can watch guys who are not presenters. This isn't their job. And that's in a small way what you want to take these presentations you want to go into there into these interviews sorry is go in there and get them to understand what you're about this is what i can bring to your company this is what i can bring to your kitchen and this is how i'm going to bring it and this is what you know it's, it's going to be like and if you can get someone to to understand that and how important in. would you say it is for people to really understand in advance the kind of adaptations they'd have to make post covid as far as you know, both in the workplace, traveling into work. Do they really need yeah. to be aware of these things before yeah. they go to an interview? As I said, it's, it's like that. It's like that practice bit. It's, it's understanding the things that you know you have to plan for. You have to know your route. You have to plan that in your head. You need to what what are the systems? Ask the questions before I come to my interview. Can I just be clear on this? I'd love it if somebody asked me about the health and safety, you know, post COVID things on site because I know they're thinking about it. Because it's very, very easy to come into a kitchen or into an environment and just fall back into old habits. And you can't do that anymore. It has to be in your mind all the time. Never take, never lose focus on it. Keep your foot on the gas. But to plan that, plan your trade test. I've got my own gloves just in case their gloves don't fit me. Right, where's my J-cloth? Where's my wipe? Where's my sani? Where's my blue roll? Where's everything? Get yourself organized. People want to see someone who's organized and efficient and knows what's going on. And then worry about the food. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much. Guys, I hope you found that helpful and uh, we'll look forward to seeing how we can support anybody looking to come and find work in our industry. Cheers.